right. All right. Now we're starting. So uh, right. listen, Red River podcast. Uh, we're going to talk TV shows, limited series, you know, basically anything that wasn't like a movie. Uh, today, we have our buddy Scott Fioretta. First podcast with any of you guys. I just talk a lot of shit online and get blocked Is by it? a lot of people. <laughs> oh, so you've yeah, never, you've like never you've done on before. Yes. Yeah, um, I, well, I had a small one I did myself in 2010 that no one's ever heard of because it was up in Massachusetts. But oh, let's talk as far as tell me what what was that about? Oh, uh, we just did movies. We just did like your standard like bullshit movies, kind of like B level exploitation shit. Nothing too crazy. Um, we did a few episodes, and then uh, part of me like getting married at the time and other stuff, life stuff got in the way, and uh, my partner was over in Portland, Oregon, and uh, we just kind of fell out of it, and that was that. We did a few episodes. It was fun, but we just never kind of got back into it. You know, this goes to show you that marriages ruin everything, including a podcast. So Absolutely. Be you warned know, out we were, there. We were well on our way. If, we if were well on our way to being nobodies. If you're a young kid... If you're a young kid listening to this episode, just, you know, take what Scott said, you know, is, is a is a bit of warning. So, um, OK, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, for anyone that doesn't know, you're it's almost like Andolfo. Like there's certain uh, people that are just like very good at talking certain things, you know, like uh, very opinionated, whether on the group or whatever. So it's like when you talk to someone that they. <laughs> They're they're basically, you know, they could hold a conversation as opposed to being like, oh, yeah, I kind of like that or that was good. Or I saw I saw two movies this year type thing. So I I, I figured that you would be good for for the topic we're going to talk about. So um, we already did movies. We did rock albums. So now we got TV shows and hip hop left. So, um, man, interesting year for TV. I can't say I was blown away by it. Absolutely. Can't say I was blown away by it. But here's the go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say the good stuff was great, and then the rest was just there. Pretty like much. It was very top-heavy, and then after that, it kind of just was B minus to C plus. Sorry to keep interrupting you, man. No, no, no. But it so the thing with that is, like, these days, it's amazing because, like, before there was crossover, I guarantee you we might have one or two of the same shows, but there's just so much stuff out there. Mm-hmm. You know, people are like, hey, like I was just having a conversation with my friend. He's like, did you check out X, Y and Z? I'm like, I never even heard of it. And he's like, oh, it's on mm-hmm. Disney Plus. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm not watching like yeah. I don't, I'm not up to date on maybe he said Rebel Moon. Does that make sense? Rebel that Moon? just came out on Netflix. So. Oh, that's the Netflix movie. Yeah. OK, OK. Yeah, yeah. So. I, it's made by one of those guys that guys that like those kind of movies always talk about. Uh, Zack Snyder. Uh, Zach, yeah, it was done to say Zack Snyder, uh, this guy that does what's his name that does Star Trek movies now. What's his fucking name? Uh, Josh Whedon. Yeah, there's like a name of a bunch of those. Oh, uh, Josh Whedon and uh, Abrams. J.J. Abrams did. Star yeah, and like I hear Star those Trek names, well. I get what it is. It's probably really good. Maybe I'll see it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I thought it was yeah. a pretty good year, though. I gotta say, I, I watched a lot of uh, oh same limited series and TV this year. Uh, it was yeah, like there was more. Like as far as limited series, I, I feel like I was like consuming those a lot more. So, but anyway, mm. we we have our yeah. guest Scott. Do you yeah. have any honorable mentions that didn't make your list? Um. I don't think so. I think I stuck stuck pretty much to the heavy hitters that I think was really good, and like I didn't want to talk too much, so I kept it to you know the top ten and a okay. couple other stuff that uh, stragglers, like single episodes, stuff that's overrated. I thought in my mind, okay. but I got my top ten that I think that's succinct. Okay, so then give us your first uh, one on the list. Give us like what you would consider number ten. Number ten, uh, Perry Mason. Um, unfortunately, it got canceled by HBO. Uh, second season was really much better than the first, which was also very good. Uh, they were doing a great job getting into the characters, motivations, um, backstories, and just fleshing out the world. Um, he finally became a lawyer in season two, spoiler alert, and uh, then they canceled it. So it really should have had legs, but didn't. I thought it was a really good series and should have gone on a lot longer. Very cool. Um, do you think they dropped the ball by not getting the Ozzy Osbourne song as the intro? Um, yeah, obviously. <laughs> you know, when we're thinking nineteen uh, thirties lawyer dramas, we got to have the Blizzard of Oz in there. You know, if right. if Ozzy's not there, they're dropping it. That's what I figured. So it was really um, timely that song release too, because all the kids were talking about Perry Mason. 
you know, <laughs> at the time. You remember that big Perry Mason revival <laughs> in the 90s? Every, all the kids, everybody was dressed in like, they put their Jinkos away and they dressed like Perry Mason. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I was a contrarian and I was with Ironsides. I put myself in a wheelchair and gained 300 pounds. Good for you. Good for you. Oh, you're talking. <laughs> uh, all right, Perry Mason on around here we call it HBO. We don't we don't yeah. call it Max. Yes. It's always going to be HBO. The fact that they even like oh, like always. the fact that they low key were like, hey, let's just get rid of this name that everyone remembers before anything that's ever happened. Like er, before any cable channel, there was always HBO. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to be like, oh, by the way, we're not HBO yep. anymore. We're, we're Max. It's like, wait, what? No, that's not almost happening. like calling like Twitter X, maybe like something like that. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't just I like mean, the that. craziest thing is that they, out of all of their branding, they took the lowest tier and used that for the name because they went with Cinemax and that's yeah. what they used to, to rebrand of yeah. their lowest tier. They're like, we have everything else, Warner Brothers, HBO, we're going to go Cinemax and just cut it. Just call it Max. Yeah, I guess TMC uh, or TCM yeah. was taken. The, no, the TMC. Yeah, stop the trying to channel. make Cinemax happen, all right? <laughs> just stop. It's not going to happen. Banshee, that's it. Banshee and softcore porn is the only thing from Cinemax. But um, Langan, do you have any stragglers on your list? That oh, I do. All right. So oh, I do. Some of those. Um, I'm going to shout out the Wu-Tang series, mm. the third season. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Now, I have to mention it didn't wouldn't make the list because se- season two was so in- was so terrible, but they <laughs> did a nice job of tightening it up on that third season, giving people what they wanted to tighten it up. Had a nice third season, the final season. I thought they did a good job with that after the second season. Yeah, um, last two episodes in particular were, were very enjoyable. Yes, big time. I was pleasantly surprised because that you know. Listen, if you're a diehard fan like we are, you know you're yeah. watching that shit. But man, <laughs> some of it got if you're so not, stupid. if if that's your entry level into the clan, you might never. Nah. <laughs> nah. It's ridiculous. Well, I mean, I, I learned about Biggie from the Biggie movie and mashed potatoes. So you know, what do you? Get? Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. I knew about Biggie. You kid. <laughs> um, I I got hijack on there. Uh, oh that yeah, was on I- Apple. Idris Elba. Yes, uh, fantastic. Okay. I don't know that one. action I don't have Apple, series. Though. Yeah, I dropped Apple actually recently after I finished that because it's really until Severance comes out. I don't fucking they ain't giving me nothing except links to buy <laughs> shit on other platforms. So I'm like, eh, I don't need this fucking thing anymore. <laughs> You're right, but they do that. Yeah, Hijack was fantastic. I, yeah, Hijack. I want to say I, I watched the first episode of Hijack. And I was mm-hmm. like, yo, this is pretty fucking good. And we still it's have tight. Apple. And I it's didn't tight. even, but it's just like, we. I never went back to it. But the first episode was like, yeah, it was like a good peeling of the onion. Like, oh, what's going on? We did on a here? similar thing. I watched the first one and then I didn't get right into the next one. But then when I did, I watched the fucking, the rest of it, like, boom, very yeah, good. Um, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. I think he's crushing it right now on Netflix. Oh, God, Yes. Flying that like timid sensibility that the guy he's a guy from Saturday Night Live that was probably too weird for Saturday Night Live because he's got like I said that Tim and Eric great show kind of sensibility but mm-hmm. this is a uh, awesome hilarious third if you like that okay. kind of humor he has that um, uh, for me it's uh, very much like uh, what we miss from kids in the hall like he has mm, like a lot of like absurd- that's good too yep. yeah yep. Yep, that yeah, um, like by absurd humor, but yeah. Are you talking through a mic? Or are you talking your thing? Your your phone broke up there. I didn't catch that. Scott. Oh, uh, I I was saying it's just dry absurd humor. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I got uh, just a couple more real quick because I don't know if they pop up on your guys' stuff. I want to rock that limited series. Great, love yeah. that. We had Tyler on the show. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. To tell him the stories of some of the 80s metal guys that you don't know of or hear of anymore, which is far, far more interesting, I find, than the ones that are still hanging on. The people that, you know, ah, yes. where did they end up? Um, curious case of Natalie Grace, absurd miniseries, limited series, just because that guy was the father on there was the most insane thing I've seen on television. This He's year. Not, that, that's on my list. <laughs> I had to mention that one real quick. Uh, uh, and Arnold limited series. 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Also, on my you have that on there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then I'll be All quiet. Right. Uh, so give me your number ten. <laughs> uh, my number ten is Jury Duty. That was on. Uh, Amazon Prime. I got, I got that on here too. Yep. I, I I got that high up, so let's wait till we it. all okay, get cool. it. Yeah, no doubt. Yep. Um. Okay. Cool. So my honorables. Once again, I want to rock. Just a fantastic. Mm -hmm. Was it three parts or four parts? I don't remember. Three parts. Paramount Plus. Just really, right. really cool. Like if you grew up with MTV and hair bands, and just like it was just like a different perspective and and, and uh, a very like human look. And what what they're doing now, uh, full circle on Max um, was interesting. It, it was um, uh, Claire Danes, and uh, it was uh, directed by Steven Soderbergh. I thought that was pretty good. Okay. Uh, also, honorable mentions for telemarketers. Mm. Oh, I got that. Yeah, I, 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 I you got, got that I on know. yours. All right, so then we'll we'll skip yeah. that. Um, on Netflix, how to become a mob boss. I thought it was fucking great. It was like six episodes. I haven't watched mm -hmm. that yet. Very entertaining. Very cool. Like um, talking about a subject that we all find fascinating in a very humorous kind of way. I thought very okay. good. Uh, it was everything I... that the Gotti series should have been. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Joe Bob, you know, The Last Drive-In, definitely on my mm -hmm. honorable mentions. Just like, you know, he's showing old movies new movies but it's just a season that i look forward to all the time because Fuck yeah I, I could just listen to that motherfucker talk about fucking anything so um it's so it's so great for uh like that's up. by far one of my favorite things on there because hey he's either gonna hit me to something i never seen before like i just watched the first half of the new christmas special the brain never saw that fucking movie did you watch that one the, i did uh, yeah yeah, I never heard saw that, heard of it. So I love it that. Or he's going to give me a movie I've seen before, and then he's going to give me all kinds of little fucking nerdy facts that people like us appreciate. You know, absolutely. Uh, and and uh, he's a treasure. Nice. Just the second movie from the Christmas special I never saw, which was the Ginger Dead Man. And I'm watching it tonight, and I'm not expecting much. Yo, it's it's actually. <laughs> I, I don't know why my bar was like semi high. <laughs> Gary Busey being a uh, life-size murderous gingerbread near bar was <laughs> but a I mean, a killer cookie. It was like worse than you'd imagine a movie that you just described. It was worse than that. It was just so worse bad. than Jack Frost. Or oh yeah, Jack Frost is so much better. Jack Frost is like the Godfather compared to the Ginger Dead Man. The snowman raping the girl in the shower with yeah. his carrot, like yeah. Jack, Jack Frost. We're talking about right, not Michael Keaton. Yeah, no, <laughs> that movie, yeah. that movie, I could watch Jack Frost. I Ginger Dead Man is so bad. It's <laughs> it's one of those movies. It's so bad that it opens up like you'll see the first scene. You're like, wait, did we skip something? Did we skip a setup or no? It just it it the movie starts like ha like midway through a scene and you're just like, what the fuck is going is on? Is it a full moon? It uh, is. Yeah, it's uh, it was directed, joint. Charles Charles Band directed it. <laughs> Say no more, fam. So, all right. My number 10 is uh, I love the Get Gotti. So I, I couldn't really decide between these two docs on, on okay. Netflix. I thought they were very good. So Get Gotti is I did the Get Gotti and Arnold split. Both very good docuseries. The Get Gotti thing, once again, it's a okay. series and, and a subject matter that we've heard beaten to death, like over and over again, like so much Gotti stuff. I thought the perspective that they gave yeah. like just the angles were very unique and stuff that I stuff that I didn't really know. Uh, and I thought it was very well, just presented very well, super stylish. And the, the Arnold doc was fucking great. Like you yeah. get him, you know, coming to America or like growing up and then just getting over here. And then you get the bodybuilding Arnold, then you get the movie Arnold, and then mm -hmm. you get fucking um, uh, the, the politician one. And, you see this guy who's had this fucking life. I mean, like growing up, we were all pretty much the same age. Like this guy was when, you know, yeah. when I saw Commando, I was like, this is the guy. This is the fucking guy. Like, in, like in retrospect, Commando is the most brainless movie you'll ever fucking see That's ever. So great. But you just absolutely watch it. and one of the best. Yeah, you just watch it, but you watch it because it was him. He's the one selling yeah. it. Like, you're like, oh, this guy is just fucking ridiculous. 
He's um, larger than life. And really, I mean, is his story got to be one of the greatest American success stories that you'll ever hear in your entire fucking life. But, I mean, comes over and does all that. that. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm just thinking he comes over to just to fuck his ugly wife made. But mm. <laughs> aside from that, you know, but that you know what? That's the beauty in him. He wants to conquer everyone. You know what I mean? Like, he's just like the mm-hmm. mate. He's like, you see that mate over there? It's like not even she's safe from my dick. <laughs> and there's there's a beauty to that. Uh, but also, you know, he, there was like a bit of sadness. Same thing with the Stallone documentary where it's like mm-hmm. these guys are at the end of their fucking life for sure and 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 there was that mm-hmm. thing where it's like okay well this decision you know i lost my family due to this and all this other shit but you know whatever anyway did you feel the sly one was like just not as good uh or did don't, you don't like we open, i mean no i love it. It, it it's a metaphor for like yeah 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 <laughs> their films yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I mean, Arnold just has a much better story in general. I mean, as a person, like, look at this lie. You, know? you can't even make a better life yeah. story. You can't even. You come out <laughs> after mine just like the movie, and it's I, not even as good as mine. I got <laughs> four. I got four. You got one. Yeah. Uh, they were both very good. But anyway, like that's that's my ten. Mm-hmm. Man, those two are very good. If you're into, you know, just a lot of information, yeah. docu series stuff. Uh, so back to you, Scott. Give me your number nine. Uh, number nine. I got Dark Winds. Uh, it's one of those TMC shows or AMC. Yep. AMC. It's an AMC show. Um, it's one of those kind of smaller under the radar shows. Uh, you know, set in the late se- or mid to late seventies, post Vietnam. You know, out in the Midwest or Southwest. Uh, kind of David Lynch and any David Lynchian, if you will. Um, I think it's good. It's going well. The performances are good, and I just like it because it's one of those shows that I think is really well done. They spend a lot of time, and uh, it's kind of under the radar. So. Yeah. I like to you know, put it out there for people who haven't seen it yet. I think Under the Radar is really good for AMC. AMC Plus is one of my favorite subscriptions. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of really cool content. And uh, as soon as you get to everything, it's, it's you know, it, it's a great channel. So Yeah, the uh, AMC Plus gives you all of Shudder as well. Yeah, so it gives you Shudder and it gives you um, IFC and it gives you Sunday. So having Shudder by itself, really, I should... Drop that and get the AMC, right? Like, what's uh, it, the... yeah, it's it's like a three dollar increase. I think it's like eight ninety nine a yeah. month, and it's kind of like Showtime worth... and Paramount Plus combined. Yeah. And I was like, why do I have Showtime anymore? Oh, you know, it's funny. I should do that too because I, I I have. Sh- <laughs> yeah, Showtime I was like, it's the same fucking thing, and I'm paying two. You know, you know, it's funny though. I have Shutter and AMC Plus, and I have Showtime and pa- like I have every app. It's amazing. I don't even count because if I tell you, sure they I'd have be like, an app. That keeps track of how many apps you have, and it'll yeah. tell you if you're like doubling shit up. So you need an app to manage the apps. Uh, and for Sam, it would just for Sam, it would just explode. Be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, I I don't want to tally up any score whatsoever because it's just like it's like oh because you look no. at it and you're like oh eight ninety nine that's pretty good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. You, you pile it onto the other two. It's the same fear as. Ex- yeah, just I'm just up, I, don't, I don't want to know those numbers are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number nine, Langan. Uh, the Reckoning. I got it. It's a BBC um, four part series uh, starring Steve Coogan, who I think is like one of the best talents out there, comedic and drama. Uh, telling the story, the biopic, basically, of the Jimmy Seville story. They had the Netflix documentary about that had a file that started top of the pops and was like a complete monster. I don't know if you guys know that story. That no, I do. Unfortunately, real, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Freakishly looking weird motherfucker, you know, top of the pops though. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so he started all that shit and he was just, I knew him from actually complete. wrestling because he was involved in wrestling. That's how I learned about him, but I learned the rest of it later on. Sorry. Really? Um, yeah. I didn't even know that, but, uh, he, uh, yeah, he was a complete monster. It's disgusting. Steve Coogan does an amazing job portraying him. Uh, it's 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 a respectable job he did because you're playing this horrible, almost like the job that that kid did playing Jeffrey Dahmer. It's like mm-hmm. appreciating the performance, <laughs> but God, what a horrible fucking story! And the ending, I know, is not accurate, like you find in a lot of biopics. 
take a lot of liberties and shit like that. But overall, though, it's a fucking powerful watch, and Coogan crushes it. One of the best performances of the year. Very cool. Um, Awesome. My number nine is a movie you had in your honorables. It's the Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Mm. Wow. Like, uh, you know, once 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 Max HBO bought up all those like uh, properties, you know, whatever random shit they have, they ended up with all these like uh, true crime, you know, like fucking things. And uh, the very beginning, like you said, that the father is weird and you're like, oh, this is like it's almost like he's doing like a WWF promo. Um. It was just interesting, right? So you watch the first episode, and you're like, "Man, this girl is crazy," and and the story just kind of unfolds after the first episode, where you you're just like, by the end, you're just like, "All right, what's the the real story here?" Because yeah. everyone has their own version of it, but the way they tell it is, do we even know? No, like I think, still, it's still think, like seems. I think there's a follow up coming in January. It's yeah. When that guy gets down on his hands and knees, and he's Beating the floor and doing that whole like yeah, that my jaw was agape. Like I was like, what the fuck? And I hope somebody comes and takes <laughs> that his son out of that basement. I feel bad for that autistic son of his that he's got yeah. in the basement. That kid's like a prisoner. Yeah, but holy shit. I wonder what what's, what, I wonder what they're doing today and tomorrow. You know, for Christmas. You know, I wonder what that dinner is going to be like. So, shout out to them. We uh, mentioned them on the show, so I'm sure they're going to be very happy. We'll speak your name. <laughs> uh scott number eight uh number eight i got poker face um just doing tv shows right now i mean i can throw into my docuseries Not but i got poker face natasha Ooh. leone really fun um some really great episodes of tv couple of misses but as a whole love the show it was really really a lot of fun uh, and i'm always a fan of her work and letting her be a fucking weirdo so i, I enjoyed the show a lot and crazy amount of guest guest stars i mean the fact that, you know, they had Adrian Brody in the first series and like first episode and, you know, just it kept going. It kept rolling. Every every episode was different stars. So it was really, really good. I feel like uh, Adrian Brody is not that hard to get these days. I feel like he might be our next guest. <laughs> you know, I feel like you know, it, I feel there was a time where, you you know, it seemed like a big deal. Now I feel like Adrian Brody is everywhere. Yeah. So. He did play yeah, the <laughs> Pat Riley. He cursed the Pat Riley. In oh, the, he uh, did. Like yeah, series that got good canceled. pick for him. Yeah, he definitely could pull off that look for sure. The worst cancellation I've ever seen. They mm-hmm. canceled the series right after they lose to the Celtics in the championship, and then it's like blurred at the end. By the way, they went on to win. Blah 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 blah. So we're not going to ever actually show you the dynasty. Just yeah, yeah. Tell you about it real quick. Yeah. Um. All right. So yeah, Poker Face. Uh, Karen loved it. I, I wish I would have seen it. I guess I could still watch it, mm. but it's like once the person you live with yeah. starts something and you, you're you not there, I'm like, ah, mm. forget it. You know, you're three episodes in. I you can missed never, the train. I, I, could I never, left the station. I could never watch this again. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, laying in number eight. Um, the new season of Beavis and Butthead. Oh, um, God damn it. You're getting all the ones. Nice. I- yeah, shout that's... out to Mike Judge. I mean, all that time off, and he comes back with this show that's just as fucking funny. It's just with a whole funny. plethora of new material of you know, shit on the internet or YouTube videos, still some music videos, them skewering everything, and then the bonus feature of the grown up Beavis and Butthead. I might even love as much as you know, what the, they're just two <laughs> fat losers sitting on the couch drinking beers all day, like you figure they would have been, but. Man, Mike Judge, super genius. Uh, you know, I, I watched a whole bunch of them, and I totally really forgot. And I'll tell you this. The movie was cool. The series mm, was even better. That. The yeah. series was even better because, like, you're, I'm watching these episodes, and I'm thinking, like, this shit is fucking – like, I'm sitting here laughing like like uh, like an insane person on the <laughs> – I'm like Karen wasn't paying attention. But, like, the episodes were really fucking well written. I'm like, how did yeah. he do this? How did yeah. he do this? So, He's all right. Awesome. Uh, my number eight is Jury Duty. Uh, Scott, nice. you have that further up? Um, Actually, I don't have that at all. So, yeah, great great pick, by Brian. Okay, Brian. Oh, you had it then. I had 10. No, it's all, all right, so let's talk. Yeah, Jury yeah. Duty. You know, th- this goes to jury show duty, you yep. about, about what we were talking about before, where, like, this show is on fucking freebie. 
which used to be IMDb. Yeah. Okay. Like you're telling me now I got to pay attention to fucking TV shows on fucking freebie. <laughs> You know, like yeah. we put it on and I was like, this is going to be fucking stupid. Right. I don't want to mm-hmm. watch this. The gag's going to run old after an episode. And it never did. It fucking yeah, no. never fucking did. I can't believe everything they, they pulled out when, when, when you know, James, James Marston. <laughs> he's so good. He's like, he like clogged his toilet and he's like, hey, man. <laughs> He like told the guy to tell him that you know <laughs> that it was hit. just that little yeah. like scene is just so fucking funny. Yeah, um, the really nerdy like white dude with the 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 we like the you know like all the gadgets. Uh huh. Yeah. So good. Like everyone was so goddamn good in this. The girl Janine, that trashy girl played Hilarious. by Edie Mod- Modica. Modica. Yeah. She Modica, is a yeah. standout. I mean, fucking so amazing. And I think the show it works because. Ronald's a genuinely good dude. Like the guy's a good guy, you know. Absolutely. Like the yeah. the the focus of the show is it, you, you know, and the the reveal at the end is fantastic. It's but yeah, I had no business. It had no business being this good. She said, "What?" Well, I, I was pleasantly surprised that I was recommended to so many people. I'm like, have you seen this? It's fucking give it a shot, right? Can you do this? Can you do a second season of this? Probably not. No. 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 I mean, you got maybe in a completely different premise, but not in a jury because, you know, yeah, I'm sure it was popular enough for people, but, you know, that's a lot of prep work. I mean, you got to really fucking think that through. Yeah. The thing goes south halfway through, then what do you do? Yeah, I love it. When, uh, like that, like that really funny, like big black, um, bailiff, where yeah. she called, like, the, she used her real name, one of the characters. And yes. then we're, yeah, they were go like because at the end, you know, they go through like like all the misses, like it, basically the pr- the last episode they show you how they did everything, and it was just so right. goddamn well yeah. done. I'm like, yo, good for you guys, man, because yeah. this could have been so stupid after episode two, where it's like, you know, yeah. or it could have been like a scripted thing where you're like, oh, th- no way, this guy has no idea. But yeah, it was great, man. So yeah, that that was my number eight, Scott number seven. Uh, well, that was my that was uh, uh that was my six actually. Okay, yeah, that's why. So, I asked um, you. yeah, sorry, my bad. That was my six. Um, I'll pick one of my docu series that I really touch. Um, I did Rustlers. I'm not sure if anyone saw that. It was on Netflix. It was about like a fledgling mid level independent wrestling organization in uh, the Ohio Valley. Um, if you like wrestling, you probably don't like the show because it, you know, didn't go into enough technical detail. But as a show, just showing the insanity and the insane people that are involved in it, it was really fun. It was interesting. And that's a quick, easy watch. Yeah, that's uh, some people have recommended that to me. Yeah. Where uh, was that? Stars, right? You said. Uh, that was Netflix, I believe. Oh, I Netflix. Think right. yeah. I'm thinking yeah. I'm thinking of the one on stars, too, which was like heels, maybe. That was heels, yeah. Which was okay. uh, that got then it's Stephen Armel, um, a bunch of other people, like character actors. It was fine. I watched that as well because okay. I watch wrestling because I'm a nerd. But uh, it was a fine show, and that that just got canceled after its second season with a big cliffhanger because everything gets canceled now. Yeah, well, it's probably because it's like a hundred things, you know. It's like, but eventually, you know, I always go back to like when I first discovered you're the worst. And I found it on Hulu oh, yeah. and I, I watched the first episode and I was like, hey, this is like the greatest TV show I've ever seen. How did I not even know this existed? And we like <laughs> I went through all 62 episodes and it had a beginning, middle and end. And I was like, this is like the best TV show I've ever seen in my life. And I never would have known if it wasn't just for actually it was because Aya Cash was on, on the boys. And I was like, who the fuck is this girl? She's okay. great. And then I went back and I watched her stuff. But yeah, it's just eventually certain things just get discovered. You know, it's like, and I, I guess I watched it five years after the fact, and everyone's like, oh, yeah. Um, laying in number seven. 10 uh, year old Tom. It's a uh, animated series on HBO by Steve Bil- Bildarian. He also did another one on HBO called Life and Times of Tim. Uh, 
10 year old Tom basically, you know, about the awkward years of kids, but with a mature sensibility and jokes and stuff like that. Uh, with this most awkward kid in the world, who is the main guy, Tom, voiced by Steve. <laughs> uh Edie Patterson who's one of my favorite comedic actresses I'll mention her later on something oh, yeah. else plays his mom mm-hmm. it's got voiceovers uh, Todd Glass Eddie Pepitone John Malkovich is one of the teachers it's completely absurd irreverent silly love it <laughs> very cool um all right so my number seven is a, a vice I mean did anybody have the dark side stuff oh no no I didn't yeah, so this year they gave us Dark Side of the Ring, Dark Side of Comedy, mm-hmm. um, and Dark Side of the 2000s. Yep. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's funny. Like, you know, the, the it's like a mixtape of your life, basically. You're watching this stuff and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So it's like nothing like new, but I guess it's just commentary on things that we live through that didn't have commentary because that's not the society that we lived in. Aside from like pop up video occasionally on VH1, you're like, oh, yeah, OK, that's interesting. Uh, so, yeah, Vice did a really good job on this stuff. Like, I don't care about wrestling. I, I don't know shit about wrestling, but I'm watching mm-hmm. season four of Dark Side of the Ring and I'm fascinated. Just like just yep. watching Marty. Gen- like, who knew Marty Janetti had a backstory? Oh, I had no oh. idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh I'll, my god, that guy. Uh, I, honestly, I'll say sorry to cut you off, but this year, no, yeah, uh, Dark Side of Comedy was much better. Like, I enjoyed it much more. The Dark Side of Comedy was really well done. I enjoyed those. I love um, what they do this season. Did they did a uh, Kinnison, so the Lang one? Yeah, they did Kinnison, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a big crush on Ellen DeGeneres when she first came out. She was a receptionist on a show called Open House. I was like, yep. oh, that, that girl's cute. It was with Chris Lemon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? Eh? You know, that's that's Chris that's, Lemon. that's what kind of man I was when I was 10 watching this stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, how to, how to type, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, very cute. So um, so yeah, that was my number seven. Very good stuff. Just like kind of, you know, a recap of, of just a bunch of stuff. And I, I love I love me a good visual mixtape. So uh number six, back to you, Scott. Uh, what we do in the shadows, uh, you know, just a fantastic series, absolutely absurd. The jokes are always kind of rolling in. Some of them are super obvious, but they never disappoint, really. So that's I go, what we do in the shadows. I think it's a fantastic show. Uh, last season's coming up, unfortunately, just announced that. The performances are great. Um, they kind of pulled back from the guest stars, which was good, because the first two seasons had a ton of them, and they're just letting the actors do their thing and Every season has nailed it. I mean, there were a few episodes here or there that were clunkers, but as a whole, series is fantastic. Series five was great. Yeah. I mean, what a great who would have known? Just the I movie. got that at my number four. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh uh yeah, I'll let you talk about it. Um I was just gonna say great series, just who would have thought after the movie? that they were going to spin it off mm-hmm. with different when they didn't use the same people. I was like, ah, oh, it's not whatever, but like that cast is just fucking hilarious. And Staten Island being oh, like God. the backdrop is just like extra yeah. absurd. You know, it just adds to the absurdity. So, uh, number six, Langan. Uh, they got Bob kiss. Anybody have that? Yeah, no, I, f- yo, that's another one. I watched the first two episodes and I was dying. Yeah. When the sex, when he's like pushing, fucking, he's like help. He's like pushing fucking Joe Pesci. Brad and, Garrett. Oh, Brad. Yeah. What am I saying? Yeah. Uh, and and I love Pesci's like a uh, grandfather role. He did think... go with the mother. I mean, I'm not even a Pete Davidson yeah. fan. I don't think I've seen his stand up. It's not good. Um, but I did like The King of Staten Island. I thought that film was very good. And then I gave this a chance. And man, I mean, uh, he got Edie Falco as the mother, Pesci as the grandfather. There's uh, Shane Gillis is in that. Uh, David Tell makes an appearance. He, everybody's in the show. I mean, he made some phone calls and a lot of people answered. Beth, Method Man, John Mulaney, mm-hmm. Dee Buscemi, John Stewart. I mean, are you kidding me? 
So even if you're not a Pete Davidson fan, there's plenty to enjoy in this show. But it ended up, uh, I was so pleasantly surprised in how good it was. You know, it, it's just, it, it. like I said, if we had all the time in the world or all the time as a kid, like, we yeah. put it. We put it on. Watched the first few episodes and legitimately laughed through every episode we saw. And just as time goes on, it's like, oh, okay, I totally. Forgot I get it. it. I get it. Uh, that's many, what this show's for. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> to recap, uh, number six, I have beef. Anyone have that high up? Mm-mm. I actually have that on my overrated list. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah. No. 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 I'll. I'll you know. Do your thing, and I'll knock it down later on. But uh, no, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I loved it. I don't know. I, I thought it was just absolutely absurd. You know, these two people interact in a road rage incident. And then from there, like the unraveling of just like they, they go to one up each other through every episode. And then it just fucking like builds and builds. Uh, there's comedy. There's violence. There's just like complete insanity and and i thought um what ali wong and stephen young right young mm-hmm. i guess that's what it, uh i thought they were great i thought mm-hmm. the acting was great his cousin uh david coy joy i forget his name um i, I don't know it just worked for me i, I thought it was really well done and uh, i think it was an a24 series so but i i, I completely would see how you know, because everyone was like fucking masturbating over that show. So, you know, if Did they answer the question, what's beef? Uh, no, the they, 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 and they didn't even use that song. So I'm very Come upset. On. I know. Yeah. Fuck. Missed opportunity. So I told you it was overrated. They didn't use the song. Here we <laughs> go with the top five. So kick it off. Number five, uh, Scott. I'm going to do, a, I, I kind of stay in this big wheelhouse, but I'm going to go with season two of Loki. I know it, it was, uh, we learned it was a really short series after the fact, but season two of Loki was incredible. The aesthetics they did for every episode was different. The visuals were amazing. Um, if you like sci-fi, there's a ton of heavy, heavy geek sci-fi in there with science, like legitimate real science that I can't explain, but they did an amazing job of that. If you like your Marvel stuff, it's there. I think season two was just out of the park. I mean, everything they did for that was really well done. And they navigated having to deal with, you know, what happened with Jonathan Majors pretty well. Uh, they still had him in there. They kept him. They didn't delete him. Uh, they might have short his role a little bit. But seriously, season two, if you like sci-fi or Marvel, it hits both of those. Well, if there's one thing we do love on this show, it's science. And uh, so, yeah, we we praise the show, Loki. Was that was it Netflix? You said uh, that was a Disney Plus show. It's part of the, all those Disney, Disney Plus. Plus Marvel shows. God damn. Yeah, it. yeah. I can't even keep track. I, no, yeah, I'm I, a basic. I'm a basic bitch. <laughs> no, okay. People love that one. Uh, Langan, number five. Um, I'm pretty sure you have this later on. So, Dave. Yeah, yeah, I have that later on for sure. So you know what? I'm going to hang on to that. Let me just chime in on my What We Do in Shadows, which I did have Number before. Four. Yep. Yeah, I, everything that Scott said, I agree with. Um, and just, listen, Matt Berry is a fucking comedy god. That guy, as far, since I've seen him on The Mighty Boosh and mm-hmm. Snuffbox and Toast to London, if people haven't seen that, that show is fucking brilliant, yep. man. That guy delivers lines hysterically, like, constantly. And uh, I, I'll watch anything that he's in and love Colin Robinson oh, as the God. energy vampire <laughs> and the fact that he's always referred to. Something about when people refer to somebody at their full name all the time makes me laugh. It, you're right. Like with, with Joey yeah. Diaz, like yeah. Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe you're Rogan. right. Like It just makes <laughs> me laugh. I don't know why. No, no you're no, right. Scenario. Because as soon as you said that, I just said Colin Robinson. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> it, it kills me. Let me tell you something, Joe Rogan. Let me tell you something, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Uh, I felt like I was <laughs> podcast. I felt like I was podcasting like Joey Diaz when I ran back in here. I was just like heavy breathing. <laughs> just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, all right. My number five, I go to Screenbox, man. It, it's the reason that I kept Screenbox after Terrifier 2. Uh, the Robo Doc. Everything that you could ever want to know about the movie RoboCop in four long ass episodes. 
it's like a four and a almost five hour mm -hmm. um docu docu series i guess it's broken up in four parts uh about robocop it's fucking awesome like everything they cover everything from like how it started how it was made the boteen stuff the characters uh you know like ray wise and and, and kurtwood smith talking about just the absurdity of like blowing up like a block and how like unsafe they felt while they were doing stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just really good, man. Really re like for anyone who loves RoboCop, you could, um, you know, get this app, uh, the screen box app for like whatever they have it at $6. So look at it as like a $6 rental that you could then keep for a month and stream a bunch of the nonsense that they have. So that's my number five. Um, nice. Number four, Scott. Uh, four for me. I had probably Langan's going to touch on it. Righteous Gemstones. Yeah, I got that up. I'll, I'll, I'll let him talk about it later. I yeah. won't. I won't go into it. I won't steal his thunder. I talk enough. No, yeah, no. But when we when we'll, he gets to it, then we'll, we'll get. Then we'll all chime in. Yep. Uh, Langan, uh, you did exactly. Oh, so you're you're good because you did your number four. Good, and I'm holding on to Dave till we speak about it. So that's gotcha. my four or five. All right. So number uh, four for me is Black Mirror. Uh, mm. No one else, right? No. Uh, only reason I didn't, I loved it, nope. but I was late, the last person to watch Black Mirror. So I binged the entire fucking thing this year. So I couldn't dissoci dissociate what came out this oh, fucking last year. Wow. I watched the whole thing in one one. That's interesting. One thing. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. What what stack awesome. what stack out to you? So you've never even seen San Junipero? I watched them all this year. Oh. Since the first season till what just came out. So in that in that you know gigantic watch, what stuck out to you? I really liked the one, uh, and I'm not going to get the name right, but when they had the the like the social cred on uh yeah with uh with Bryce Dallas was yeah. uh, Ron Howard's daughter I think was the main that's it, probably the best people can rate you and downgrade you I love that fucking episode I think yeah. that might be my favorite one of the series but but that that might, that might be the strongest season for sure uh, yeah that's the one with San Junipero which oh was, that, yeah amazing um yeah man this season no stop that was the name of the episode sorry yeah um this season was great but not as good as the other ones. But I mean, that's the way it's going to go. You have six episodes. Um, I mentioned mm -hmm. Beyond the Sea, which was the be, be behind San Junipero is Beyond the Sea for me. Like that's where the um, Josh okay. Hart, Josh Hartnett, Aaron Paul, when they they first of all, you don't know what's going on. the 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 movie star, you know, the it's eighty minutes, so I, I refer to it as a movie. You know, the story begins and they're mm -hmm. like astronauts and you're like, I don't know exactly what's going on. Then you see the family stuff. Then you see like a Manson type fucking angle to it. And then from there, the tragedy happens and it's just like this unbelievable fucking story. And that's really what draw. like if this wasn't on there, it probably would have been in my honorable mentions. But I love three out of the six. I liked one of them and then like two of them were just okay especially like the last one uh mm -hmm. but i you know when it comes it's to like the twilight zone they're not gonna every one of them might yeah you might not be your favorite but shit you know they take good swings yeah when they connect it's they take good swings because it's like what other show does this like it's just such a unique fucking show and this was the first season that i noticed that uh charlie you know, the writer um, kind of veered off a little bit because I guess like there's only, you know, you don't want to be stuck in this box. So, you know, he he tried to, uh, some different things, but goddamn, that third episode beyond the sea is 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 the masterpiece here. So uh, Scott, number four. Uh, four for me. Well, no, there's would be three for me, I think. Right. Oh, OK. Cause, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three yeah. for me was the bear. I'm not sure if anyone wants to talk about the bear, but three for me was the bear. I watched the first episode, thought it was awesome, just like Sam was saying before, and then get caught up, and I didn't yep. get back yet. But you know, um, it has you know my probably my favorite episode of the season for any show, which was uh, episode seven, Forks. If anyone's seen it, if you haven't, it's just all about you know touches on basically 
part of part of life. A lot of us people we know we're stuck in right now, you know, middle age kind of listless, trying to find our place. Life is terrible, and inadvertently finding where we need to be and finding our happy spot. But uh, it's you know, the show itself it's frenetic. It's a lot of chaos. It's basically a show about a guy who just needs to go to fucking therapy and will not do it, which is basically any of us. Hell yeah. And uh, it's really well done. Yeah, I'm never. I, I don't think I need to go to therapy, but if, <laughs> if, if anyone does, and you know, bless bless you. That's what this show is. <laughs> totally, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, another show. I watched the first yeah. few episodes of, of the of that first season. Listen, the first episode had Wilco and Refused on the soundtrack, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Whoa!" I'm like, "This is really <clears throat> cool." And there was a lot of yelling and a lot of talk about food. Uh, mm-hmm. Like it was almost like the brother, like made me just like hate the show. But uh, I yeah. should go back to it. And Bob Odenkirk's in it too, right? Which that was like, God, I gotta watch the show because I'm a Bob Odenkirk. Oh, s- fucking super episode fan. six of this season. You've got Bob Odenkirk, John Barenthal, John Mulaney, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, Sarah Paulson. I think that's it. But I mean, Jesus, that's Pretty just good. a murderous yeah. row for guest stars for one episode. Ooh. Yeah, that's the beauty, you know, like you when you call in those favors, like, hey, man, do you want to be on the show? And it's good for everyone. You know, yeah. I don't know the show. I, I don't know. the oh, epi- yeah. I don't know the episode, but I know everyone's like, oh, my God, the Jamie Lee Curtis episode was amazing. So that's that's what I remember. Um, so Lang in number three. Uh, anybody got Barry? No. No. I um, have it. You're going to be angry at me. I have it on my overrated. Oh, uh, you're tripping. <laughs> Fight. I, um, loved, I, I loved one in seasons one and two. I enjoyed mm-hmm. three. Season four, I hated it. Sorry. But you go ahead. I'll, I'll shit on that later. <laughs> I lost you there. But uh, I'm going to start. I, uh, it, there's something to be said, but like not staying around too late. At the party, I think they got out at the right time. But I love how this show, I've never seen one so like effortlessly switch gears from comedy mm-hmm. to dark, dark drama. Chin, you know, even within the same episode, it's amazing. And Bill Hader is, is a fucking super talent. And he's, I think he's the most talented person to come out of SNL since like Bill Murray or. Like as far as the, you know, what I like in a in a comedic drama actor, you know what I mean? Like in that in that mm-hmm. sense, um, Henry Winkler crushes it. Stephen Root always amazing. Uh, Noho Hank mm-hmm. is a character for the ages, and uh, I don't. I, I can say I did never seen a show like this really uh, that really covers like so many genres. It's very impressive. I like it. Um, all right, so my number three is a show no one talked about on Peacock called Based on a True Story. Never heard of it. I don't know. Go ahead, man. Fill us in. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just yank this up here. Um, based on a true story? Yeah, it's called Based on a True Story. True um, story. Is it the John... Uh, <laughs> John Brennan. Story. <laughs> story. You know, I feel like they dropped the ball now that you mentioned it. Like I didn't, he didn't, you know, <laughs> if you're going to, if you're going to have a cameo and didn't have John Brennan. On that. Uh, so it, yeah, it's a married couple and um, God, like, all right. So I'm just going to read it here. Cause it's, it's very hard to describe uh, between endless bills, midlife crisis and squabbles, a new pregnancy, yada, yada. Um, Nathan feels like uh, watching their lives fall apart. And Ava, the wife, uh, who's played by Kelly Cuoco, she's like a okay. big – she's a big true crime podcast person. Oh, now I – okay. Yep. And uh, they're, they just happen to have a serial mm-hmm. killer in their town. So they think that they know who it is. And uh, it just happens to be somebody who's working on their house. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, wow. so they're like yo let's just start a podcast because we feel like it's about this guy and it's just i we put it on and from the first episode i'm like this is really funny really and then like uh the story just unwinds 
a lot of lefts, a lot of rights, great turns, um, things you see coming, things you don't see coming. But all the episodes are really fun. And it's just it, basically about these two people and a p- true crime podcast and somebody who they think is a serial killer. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, big, I'm big gonna see that. Yeah. Definitely. I forgot the name of the show, but I remember it from the promos. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta check it out for sure. Uh so wow, number two, Scott. Uh two for me was uh Last of Us on HBO. Yeah. Um Not great adaptation of a game I never played. Uh I never played the game because I don't have a I don't have a PlayStation, so I didn't know all of the minor plot points. I knew the major beats. Um, just incredibly well acted, well done. Uh, episode three, um, another one of my best episodes of the season. Uh, that was with um, Nick Offerman. I can't remember the other actor's name. I should know it. He was in The White Lotus. Um, just an amazing love story. Uh, well done. That took you away from the two major characters but you still were involved in the major story. Um, just a great show. Um, performances are great. And it brought up, uh, you know, Chilean daddy, Pedro Pascal to the world. So I'm ah. happy for that. <laughs> That's right. Who could forget that? Who could forget Chilean daddy? <laughs> uh, hey, listen, as, as a fellow Chilean, I love it. So That's good that, for him. You know- Hey, listen, whenever someone's like, uh, you know, whenever I hear like someone's Colombian, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like it's like what every <laughs> Italian does. <laughs> They're like, you know, uh, that guy's Italian, right? <laughs> but uh, on, yeah, on his hands side, it, I, I'll tell you, um, I, I, I just go back to that. My my name is I right No, What is that? Holy shit. I totally forgot the Jim Carrey movie. My name is no. My, me, myself, and Irene. Yeah, yeah, and me, my, yeah, exactly. Oh my god, so funny. He's like, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm a quarter Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> See, like the black kids in like the in the pool. Yep. Um, thi- yeah, that show was fucking great, Lenny. Did you watch the show? No, I haven't. It's uh, you would like this, and I didn't know the video game, and uh, I watched it by proxy. You know, once again, like my girlfriend would put it on, and. I didn't really have an interest. You know what it was? I think it came off the heels of like the final uh, Walking Dead universe, and I was like, "Yo, you know what I I'm get not? That. You know what I'm not doing right now? I'm not watching this. I'm not fucking watching another guy Dystopian and girl go through the fucking apocalypse, apocalypse right? and all this other stuff." But every Sunday she would watch it, and the the makeup, like the fungus yeah. stuff, it was. It was mm-hmm. just great. I just didn't really invest in it, so I couldn't. I thought it was amazing. I thought the, the, the two main characters were great. Yeah. The, girl, the girl from um, what was that Game of Thrones and Pedro, very good. Uh, you were gonna say something? She, oh, just remember her name. She was Bella Ramsey in the show. Uh, oh, the, uh, oh, Bella Ramsey is her name. Sorry, Bella Ramsey is her name. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um, Game of Thrones people don't yell at me because I don't remember her character name. Trust me, no one's yelling at you. No, no, no one's listening We'd to this good. episode. <laughs> We'd come for that kind of interaction. So if anybody wants to yell at Scott, maybe Hugo will text me. Facebook. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was Brian, very- Brian, the, the line of people who want to yell at me. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? They might listen just specifically for that. Just to just to make fun of his phone connection. Listen, um, hate listens still count as a click. You know? <laughs> that is true. That is true. Bring it on. Yeah, send off in the comments if you want. But anyway, <laughs> what, I, what I'm yeah. trying to say is it was very good, and it was so good that it still leaked through my psyche as I wasn't watching it. Enough to be like, oh, th- like you know what mm-hmm. stuck out to me? Like the actual infected people. It was like a fungus or something, yeah. and they looked fucking gross. 100%. So. Yeah. Uh, we'll jump in the same reason you did. But then when I heard it was really good, I figured, you know what? I'll watch this. Well, they I know the second season's gonna roll out and then see if it's for me, you know. Yeah, so you just uh stockpile it for sure. Uh number two or, uh mentioned before by Scott, Righteous Gemstones. Talk so we about can it. get into that. You you got that Sam or no? Uh no, I don't. Okay. Uh listen, Danny McBride plus HBO is it is not a losing combination ever. Like it's Comic Gold at all times. Eastbound and Down is one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. Vice Principals was amazing. Brings back some of the same cast of characters. You know, Walter G- Walton Goggins, uh, Edie Patterson. I mentioned her before from 10-Year-Old Tom is fucking 
might steal the show for me. Might steal that whole entire show for me. She's amazing. John Goodman crushes it. If people don't know, it's about a, you know, a televangelist kind of family. Joel Olstein, kind of whatever the fuck you can imagine. Mega church bullshit. And uh, how shady the fuck they are behind the scenes for the most part. But again, this is another one that kind of jumps. There's some action in this fucking show. It's not just like all comedy. It's uh it's a ten. It's a, it's amazing. What do you think, Scott? I mean, you you knocked it out of the park. I don't have much to add to it. People need to watch it, you know, so it keeps going. But I know they'll probably stop yeah. it, you know, after a couple more seasons. But it's phenomenal. This season, like you said, there's a lot more action than previous seasons. But it's still just phenomenal and A plus across the board. Yeah, so fun. All right. So that brings me to my top two. Uh my number two is Ted Lasso. Uh um, Okay. I know a lot of people eventually, you know, the, the, I guess the biggest gripe with the show, you know, towards the the uh, this season was just how kind of corny it kind of stepped into. I get it. Yeah. But I thought it was a, a fun way to close out the, the the show. You know, they're only doing the three seasons. Maybe maybe they'll do a spinoff. We give them one. credit for that. Yeah, just you know the it, it, and I I thought the ending was satisfying. Um, I love like that. Uh, some of the characters they introduced, you know, like that that fucking like out of his mind soccer player that they all got. Oh uh, yeah. Um, just really, I I thought a really good writing. They did, like I said, they did kind of like lean into certain corniness and um, you know it's. Listen, it's it's a PC person's dr- wet dream to have a show this good, you know, that that isn't mean spirited in any way. But yeah. I think that's what the show was and is and closed out at. So uh, I don't know, man. I just watch it, and that from that intro when it starts, um, all the characters seem the whole cast. Like, there's not one person on the show that fucking sucks they're all very good at their role like even like the random ass like fucking team players you know uh if you yeah. want the flip side to this you know uh the real shit that we grew up on you know dig up first and 10 you know that's <laughs> yeah that's, yeah Way yeah that, that's that's for, <laughs> that's for the neanderthals you know so like you could you know these two could live in the same universe but yeah. I loved it. Uh, Ted Lasso season three. Nice way to go out. Um, Lasso lost me when because um, I loved it at the beginning. And then I think it came out of nowhere, like, you know, because in that pandy pandemic year, you know, it was kind of like a nice yeah. kind of medicine, medicine for everybody to have something like that. And then I think when it got that heat, this is for me, obviously, you know, who the fuck knows what everybody else thinks. But uh, it became aware, like too self-aware of what kind of a show it was and like didn't naturally lean into it. Like, I think it was like over saccharine at a bit at a point in time. You're right. But I, yeah, like, and, and then, you know, they and kind of leaned into a little like of the social climate, wokey kind of whatever, you yeah. know, not that there's anything wrong with those viewpoints, but you know what I'm saying? Like, don't beat me over the head with it. Yeah. But don't still, beat me. Don't beat me over the head, but it was still, still it's a good here. show though. It's a good show though. What I really loved in the first season with Roy Kent was like, I felt like I'm like, oh, I relate to this guy because he thinks everyone is a fucking crybaby pussy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I I like this guy because he's just constantly like living like Johnny from Cobra Kai. (laughs) Yes, exactly like him. Those two in particular (laughs) where you're like, you know what? Like this guy's fucking cool because everyone. Yeah. So and then as time went on, he like begrudgingly like, yeah, like they made him, you know, not as cool. But listen. It's still a really good season, and and you know it's it's a great. I love when when shows come in and out. It's like okay, yeah, three seasons to this. This is the way it goes. This is how it starts. This is the middle. This is the ending. Perfect. Well, it's obviously got that British sensibility, so and that's how they usually run things. It's like two seasons, yeah. to the Office, whatever. That's it. America will stay there fucking fourteen years. So it's like <laughs> beaten to death, you know. <laughs> Afterlife did that too, right? They did like three seasons with Gervais. Yeah. He was just like, "All right, third season, we're yeah. done." Yeah, it's cool. Yep, I get it. Uh, so what do you have left, Scott? 
Uh, for my number one show, um, Succession. Yeah. That's I'm mine not sure too. if anyone has on the list. Okay. That's yeah. what I got. Um, you know, uh, just phenomenal. Just some of the tensest, darkest, also very funny at times. Yeah. Uh, really quotable if other people watched it. Um, you know, so it's just a fantastic show. I won't expunge on it too much. I'll, I won't see O'Brien because he's a permanent fixture and he can talk about it. Uh, well, you know, it's I hadn't seen any of the seasons when I heard that they were, ha- you know, this was going to be the final one. I'm like, all right, let me check this out, see if it's my cup of tea. And it was easily bingeable. I banged through whatever they had ready mm-hmm. as soon as, and then was waiting there for, you know, for each episode to come out. But just like you said, I mean, hence drama, but super funny too. The cast is one of the most amazing ensemble cast I've seen. Um, it's got all its Greek tragedy sub sub elements in the subtext. You, you'll be able to decipher and family issues and stuff like that. But you know, and it's basically you know, a loose adapt- adaptation of the Murdoch family, I believe, is what they say, or any of those kind of you know powerhouse things. But this is one of those great HBO shows. This is one of those shows like The Sopranos or whatever that I'll watch. I'm gonna. I can't wait to rewatch this show. Like I'm ready to like go right now and start season one again. Like that's how much I loved it. And the second I saw it, I'm like, well, this is my number one show of the year. And then let's see what the other nine are going to be. That's how good it was. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Same thing for you, Scott. You you knew right away. Number one. Yeah. I mean, I love the show. I've been watching it previously. Um, you know, a long time, first time, uh, you know, it was a fantastic <laughs> show. Uh, you know, love the disgusting brothers. You know, they're amazing, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it shows fantastic. Like I said, it's so easily quotable and so many jokes, but also so deep and so mm-hmm. mean that, you know, it's just for everybody. The performances were amazing. Um, episode three, Connor's Wedding, uh, it's up there from one of my top mm-hmm. se- episodes of the year. Um, it takes a swerve out of nowhere that no one expected and just phenomenal. It's so emotional and just, you know, drama. Mm-hmm. So, gotta can't, shout can't, out the scene. I'm sorry. Here we go. Sorry, go ahead. No, good, bro. Uh, no, I was going to say no, the scene with Shiv you. and Tom on the balcony is one of the greatest acting scenes. Oh my god! Acted scenes since for on HBO, I've seen since since Tony and Carmelo fought in White Caps in that intense yeah. argument. Uh, and if you know, you remember it, you know what I'm talking about. But God, mm-hmm. that was that this scene in particular is one of the best I've ever seen. So many acting coaches are going to hear that monologue for the next ten years, uh, but it's yeah. worth it. Yep. <laughs> uh all right, cool. So I'm I'm about to wrap it with my number one, which is Dave, season three. Hell yeah. Man, uh I remember I, I mentioned this because it made my top ten every year for every season. And I just saw Little Dicky as a guy who was a f- complete like I thought he was just I mean, he was a joke. Wow. He, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Like you're like <clears throat> Steel Panther, like Wheeler Walker Jr., like it's fun. You're a great songwriter that has humor to your stuff. So uh, part of me, you know, in my hip hop snobbery, I'm like, ah, that's cool. I'm like, I just don't need this like goofball. Like, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah, that's, you know, I. it was just very clownish. You're not the fat boys, buddy. Yeah. And <laughs> but goddamn, have I been eating my words every season of this show and th- this season uh, he's number one, man. Just what a fucking brilliant, brilliant, brilliant show from um, the uh, the tweet where <laughs> he tweeted and he, I guess, made made pretend he was dead for like an episode or two on Twitter. <laughs> um, what else? The the Met Gala episode, Met Gala episode was just on fucking believable. The songs created for this, Mr. McAdams, so catchy, all leading up to that last episode with Brad Pitt. Like, God. Insane. Damn. That episode. Legend. It's just That's... like, <laughs> I can't, I can't even wrap my head around just how <laughs> that shit crescendoed and how I thought he would just stick his head in. Like, oh, Brad Pitt was in for a camera. Nah. No, he was in. He was about it, yeah. He was about yeah, it, it was yeah, great. for sure. It's funny, this show, never heard of it until you, you recommended it. Um, 
I was watching season one. I wasn't in love with it. I'll be honest with you. Like, it was, it was like I saw its limitations or whatnot, and I just put it aside. And then when this new season came out, same thing. I'm like, let me try this again. And I watched it, and it was good enough and stuff. But then they started by season two, and then now really yeah. fleshed out this universe yeah. and wrote the characters around him really well that – like I was emotionally invested in these people now. Like it wasn't just a goof. Like the, it, they all meant something to me, and they, I wanted to see where this went. You know. They, and let me tell you, if I can wish anything good for somebody to have a a girlfriend like Kim Wexler from Better Call Saul, and have a have a homeboy like Gator. Everybody yeah. needs a Gator. Everybody. <laughs> Yo, Gata is so, and and I love that. That's his real hype, man. You know, so that yeah. that I, that's the beauty of it. Season one didn't kick off till like probably the Gata episode, which mm-hmm. is, was in the middle of the season where you you touch on his like um bipolarism, I think right, it was, right. and mm-hmm. that's where like the tone shift halfway through the season of season one, where you're like, oh, this show is. A little He's different. just silly, yeah. And then the whole time you want him to be little dicky, you want him to rap, you want him to do this stuff, but he didn't really, he didn't really do that, honestly, until like this season where he's on mm-hmm. tour and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, this is the thing. So it was just like a slow climb to get there. So the first season's good. Second season was just absurd with like Benny Blanco and like the like yeah. the piece of gum in his ass, and they're just like, I'm like, yo, you guys are like literally yeah. fucking right now <laughs> like it's just so yeah weird. that shit got weird bro. it got fucking yeah, weird so man i'm like whoa all right guy like that's definitely you guys are going for it uh but yeah anyway season three loved it i can't recommend it enough you could watch it up on hulu uh scott you had some overrated stuff so let's yeah let me hear those um well you know again barry loves season one and two uh three was a little bit of de- deviation for I just hated how much it deviated. There was almost no comedy to it to, in my mind. I mean, again, I know it's subjective, it but uh, really didn't have that kind of comedic beats. Small bits here and there, primarily with Noho Hank when he was uh, at the compound with uh, the the Raven, but uh, not too much as far as comedy went. You know, went a little too surrealist for me. You know, when he was out in the desert or wherever it was on the plains, um, didn't enjoy it as much. So uh, and I loved Barry, absolutely do. Uh, Bill Hader deserves everything. Should have been a ne- an Emmy winner three now four times. It's nothing on him. Dude's amazing. Um, uh, touched on Sam. Touched on Beef. I thought it was you know fine, but I think that was just overhyped. I thought it was a fine show. I watched it. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like you know I see it because I did some research. I seen all these top ten lists and like the top five. I didn't think it was that good. I thought it was good, not that high up. Yeah, and listen. Um, in my, Dog, in, in, hold on. In my defense, it was number six. Go ahead. <laughs> Continue. Are you there? Yeah. We finally lost yeah. him. He hung up on your ass, man. <laughs> we finally lost him. He's like these young guys. One of them like Barry. One of them like Beef. I've had enough of this shit. I can't believe I just I interjected my joke and he's gone. The Irish goodbye to bo- uh, podcast. <laughs> it's a hot take, Sam. <laughs> he wasn't ready for it, obviously. I guess not. Uh, <laughs> all right, I guess we lost him, Scott. If you could hear me, I don't, I don't know. His connection was super wonky, anyway. Uh, yeah. But he, he had a lot of good stuff to say. He said um, it all. He said it all. That's it. So uh, we're going to have to get the rest of his overrated list and put it in the comments. And uh, oh, connecting the audio. I see. Oh, okay. The, uh, there he goes. Are you there, Scott? There we go. Sorry about that. Yep. Okay. Sorry. You're busy yelling at me. Go ahead. No, no, that's fine. I said in in my defense, uh, my beef was on uh, my number six, so it didn't crack my top five. So take that back. <laughs> I, I rescind right. my uh, my my dignity and my apologize. Um, but Res Dogs, um, season three just didn't do it for me. I'm not sure if you guys watched it at all. Season Kirby's one great, really funny. Season it. two also funny. Had emotional to it. 
Yeah, but season three just they pivoted away from the main cast to uh, adults in the community that we you know we touched on here and there, but some we never met before. And you know, I'd prefer the younger cast. Um, so that was that for me. And the curse with um, oh yeah, uh, Nathan Fielder and, and uh, what's her face, uh, uh, Shark Teeth. I don't remember Emma her name. Emma Stone. Thank you. What you call her? Um, Shark Teeth. Shark Teeth. <laughs> shark teeth. <laughs> Uh, when she was younger, she had little weird shark teeth before uh, she got rich to fix them. Gotcha. Um, God bless But uh, Yeah, no, I, I want to love it. I just, you know, I'm still watching it. I think Nathan yeah. Fielder's a, an insane genius, but it's just not doing it for me. I don't know. Part of it's just not doing it. I'm going to jump I in. I love how awful he is. Like, he's oh, the, he one is. of the worst, like, <laughs> characters. One of the, and I don't mean it bad because I'm enjoying the show, but like, mm-hmm. He's, I, I hate I hate everything about this person. Like if this person was in my life, I'd want to stay as far away from them as possible and probably the idea, obviously. And so that my that yeah. and my only negative thing I have about it is is, is what's his face is wake, uh safety brother. It's so it's, Benny. it's so distracting to me that wake. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. It's like a helmet. I'm Oof. gonna I'm gonna say I, I'm two episodes in on the curse. I, I like it. I don't love it yet. Um, I'm knee deep in Fargo, which I, I think is really good. So I'm finishing that. I'm like maybe six episodes in. Um, and I like I like Bookie. Am I the only one that's liking Bookie on HBO with Sebastian Maniscalco, where he plays like a Bookie, Bookie? in LA? Bookie. Bookie. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's I've I've never seen it. Go, Scott. I think I'd like that guy better as an actor than a stand-up because I oh, think his stand-up I don't, I don't is want, I don't so want over animated and hacky. Like he's got good material, but like the whole like I can't that shit. But I do like him acting, so I'm getting curious. I never heard of it. Yeah. Everything about him annoys me. He seems like he was created in a lab to uh, appease the Tri-State area New Yorkers. That's it. <laughs> like, like he, he's the he's the new version of Billy Joel. Like, if you're from the Tri-State area, you gotta love him, and you're an idiot if you don't. Well, Everywhere else, you're like, who is this guy? What's he talking about? It's also that Chicago accent. He's got a thick Chicago accent for sure. But yeah, I, I can see the Tri-State oh, yeah. embracing that. But listen, anytime but the show's you, good though. Anytime you put like you know uh booky like crime related stuff yeah it's interesting mm-hmm. it's like him just collecting debts and like people kind of like it's like uh how hard it is to be a bookie today you know and uh when you don't ha- when you don't have the the threats of is violence it, basically to back you is up. it a comedy or a- yeah it, it's both it's it's just like uh it's it's got like you know it's got violence to it but cartoonish um, but yeah, it's 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 comedic. It's fun, and, and they're like twenty minute episodes, so it's very digestible. Uh, I'm enjoying right. it. I think there's like eight, check it out. I think the eight season eight episodes are up now. So, but uh, all right, man, that was fun. We got the TV yeah. shows out of the way. Uh, some suggestions, Scott. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Sorry if I interrupted you. My connection wasn't great. Uh, if I ever come back, I'll use a better uh, laptop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think we could decipher. You know, we'll, we'll throw in yeah. uh, we'll throw in the subtitles for some of that stuff. But uh, I think you did great. So uh, <laughs> you, had, you had you had a great list. A lot of good things to say. So everyone, Merry Christmas and all yeah. the good shit.